Chapter 4 The Akimon Mar Winter, S2348 AE Lined up in the pit below the temples of Selboski, we perform our pre-combat rituals. Each of us represents a clan. Today we fight and learn, together. Next season, we will participate in the trials for a chance to become members of the elite warrior class, the Rektal. Everyone is eager for a chance to show off their skills. Jop, my brother, shakes his long arms lightly to warm up. He resembles our father. They have round noses and the squared shoulders of a mountain. His coarse black hair has grown out from ten days without a shave. Those who have never seen Jop might say I resemble our father. But I'm a slighter mold. Hela, of the Umtap clan, pulls her head to the side to stretch her neck. She is stout and walks with a wide gait. Like many of the Umtop, her bronzed brown skin contrasts with the snow wafting around us. Her father was a friend of my father. They fought alongside each other in the war against the North. When her father passed, our father took Hela to train her alongside his own children. Kag, of the Navij clan, swings a heavy hammer in each hand. His long, braided hair indicates his high standing in the Navij clan. I'm not familiar with the Navij warrior, but many have attested to his skills in single combat. I'm eager to see if the rumors are true. Nestled in solitude in the western valley of the mountains, his clan created the fighting forms that all clans have adopted. I practice my breathing to remain calm and conserve as much vigor as possible. I am Mar of Clan Eroken. We are the keepers of the chalkworm silk and the leaders of all Ilitha. Before our father rose to power, we were regarded as a weak clan, filled with more den mothers than warriors. Our father, King Lack, and a few others watch us from above the pit. Many clans have not yet arrived. Those of us here are the early arrivers, and we must prepare the city for the other clans. Many people travel to Solboski during winter for trade and fierce competitions. In Solboski, our ancestors built permanent dwellings, arenas and temples, which we make our winter homes. In the remainder of Illitor, it's uncommon to have a permanent home. Mar, keep your shield arm high! Father paces around the pit. Gag's blunted sword grazes over the top of my shield and bashes into the side of my head. Flashes of light shine from the back of my eyes and I'm falling to the frozen ground before I can blink. When I realize what has happened, Jop has already taken my place in the spar, and he has begun dismantling Kag's defense. When you leap forward to attack, you tend to let your shield arm waver in favor of a more powerful attack. Our father jumps down into the pit and begins to criticize my defense in detail. Hela steps back, lowering her eyes when father enters. You can't throw ice every time, or you will lose control. He waves me over. Show me your sword grip. I flip my wrist over to show him my grip on the blunted practice sword. Meanwhile, Jop avenges my defeat by knocking Gag unconscious with a brutal slam. Good. Hold on, as if it were your life mate. Soft, yet unbreakable, my father says. The sword hilt sits perfectly in my palm. Nothing has ever fit more perfectly, anywhere. Yet the shield is cumbersome, and an unnatural weight against my forearm. Now, reclaim the glory that your brother has taken from you. He points at Jop while keeping his gaze upon me. Jop, towering nearly as tall as our father, turns around and waves me toward him in a challenge. Resisting the growing hesitation, I shake my shoulders loose and charge for him. Our swords and shields collide as we trade a series of attacks and blocks. Shortly I make yet another mistake, overextending my shield in defense against Jup's long sweeping attack from above. I leave my blocking arm high. He hits my shield with his own and trips me with his practice sword. Before getting up, I glance toward our father. He remains neutral, refusing to influence either son. I press my teeth together, rise, and charge again. Slipping the first swing, I manage to drive the end of my sword into his right shoulder. He grimaces as his defense is penetrated. He stomps forward and jabs his sword into my shield again and again. When I find his timing, I swat his blade down into the side. 
His blunted edge lodges itself in the leather of my shield strap. He grunts and spews his milky sweet breath as we become entangled. Chop is adamant today. He is not holding back. And I prefer it this way. Release it! Chop tries to headbutt me free. When he misses, he pulls harder, ripping my shield off with his sword, and both are flung to the opposite side of the arena. Armed with only a shield, he lunges with sweeping attacks. I roll out of range and toward my departed shield. The strap has been sheared off, so I can't make much use of it. Jop is leaping at me again. I fling the fractured shield at him and quickly take his sword from the dirt. I hear the shield crack and snap as it bounces off his forearms. Equipped with both blades, a sense of balance overcomes me. When he comes to me again, I knock his shield aside with my off hand and attack him squarely with my mane. I'm faster without the cumbersome shield, so I escape his assault and reposition myself on his weak side. Slash. Block. Slash. I swing one sword, knock his attack away with the other, and swing the first sword again. Frustration begins to show through his bared teeth. He throws his shield to the ground, clenches his jaw, and lunges for my legs. Normally, he would have caught my ankles. But not this time. With a clear vision and lighter feet, I jump out of the way. He grunts and reaches again. I throw my feet backward and use the blades to counterbalance my dodge. Jup lands in the frozen dirt. Earthy scents of fertile dirt break free from the permafrost underneath him. My swords rise to Jup's neck in a blizzard of my confidence. This is the first time I've ever beaten him. I want to smile and tease him, but after the many times he has beaten me, he has never gloated. I remain firm and respectful to my brother, even though I want to scream of my victory to the gods watching above. Stop, our father says. We both snap to attention, and I drop my swords to the ground in respect. Go with Gag, and make sure he makes it to the healer. Father holds me back with his hand. Not bad. Jupp gathers up his shield and slings it onto his back. Jupp smirks and nods in approval as he walks away. He meets Hela who is helping Gag out of the training pit. After their exit, my father studies me. Do you seek the role? He says. Does he mean Akimon? The Akimon are the rare generational warriors who lead the front line to war. Most of the den stories involve one in some regard. Unsure of what he wants me to do or say, I remain silent. Could I be next? I've always imagined Jup claiming the honor. Throughout our history, the Akimon have held the highest honors of combat. Yet the glory awarded them shorter lives. He gazes toward the sky. Your mother, my battle maiden, carried the blades. We took them north against those who trespassed. You've heard the tales of her greatness. There have been many great dual wielders of Eroken, but only a few have carried the twin blades. The blades were forged from a rare mineral given by the gods for the great queen Sakdaw. War and harmony were names given by the swordsmith. Once they were complete, the queen used the twin blades to defeat northern invaders. Her triumph over the north built a legend that initiated the tradition. When she retired from battle, the legendary blades passed on to her trusted guardian, Tezaza. He was the first Akimon. The honorary passing of the twins flowed from Tezaza down the river of time. One day, the blades fell to our grandfather, Yodge. He carried the blades until our mother was strong enough to wield them. Yes, I accept. He takes a step away from me and glances at the ground in a thoughtful manner. His heavy fur coat sweeps across the field when he turns back. It is your privilege to claim the twin blades. If... It is what you desire. Before I speak, he holds his hand up to stop me. There will be no dishonor in leaving the blades for the next. But you have first claim. I follow him out of the pit. Once we exit, he wraps his heavy arm around my shoulders. A few chalkworms wander pointlessly in front of us while our clan gathers the last silks of the season. It must have felt nice to finally best your brother. He grins. It did. I smirk back. He laughs along with me as a flurry of snow gusts at our backs. <laughs>